All right, guys, a star-studded matchup right here that we have for the next combat sports coverage event. The 125-pound brown belt super fight title is on the line, and Valerie Wong is one half of the participants. How are you doing today, Valerie? Good, and how are you? I'm doing very well. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you started your whole jiu-jitsu journey. Uh, so I started jiu-jitsu at 16, 17. I played water polo in high school, and when I moved cities they didn't have it so I got into something new had no clue what I was signing up for walked into the gym someone said jujitsu would be good I trusted them ended up on the mats and here I am eight years later and if you guys don't realize she has a nice little shiner on her right eye so obviously she has a little more than just jujitsu tell me a little bit about your MMA career uh, yeah, so I started MMA uh, probably at 18, so just in the gym, people were like, hey, you do enough jiu-jitsu, let's get some striking, let's get some fights in, and I did, and uh, I made my pro debut with Invicta after seven Ammies, uh, and I've gotten to fight out in like New Orleans for a couple of promotions, and yeah, just doing jiu-jitsu in between it. So you spent some time in Northern California, found yourself in Las Vegas, so you could train at Syndicate MMA. Tell me, for you, in your words, how was to have all those very empowering women around you? Oh, my goodness. I have never met such amazing, athletic, cool women. And they're so nice, too. And that's, like, the best part is I was nervous. I was like, well, I know I'm definitely going to get good training no matter where I go in Vegas. Syndicate, of course, has the best. I'm biased, but we have the best girls. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I'm like they are so nice and they became friends and you know they're like best friends and people that I love to see every day so not only do I get great training with them but it's like a great support system it's just a great team overall what about syndicate made you want to choose them above other gyms because like you said Vegas has a ton of other places you could have went yeah we uh I um was here for a week before we moved and just tried a couple of gyms and everywhere like had great people, really nice uh, like facilities, and all great gyms to train at. Um, we did a session with John Wood, my fiance and I, when we moved out here, and he just kind of has a way of like talking to the fighters and like welcoming me in. I didn't feel really pressured at all, and so I tried them out for a week. And the coaches that they have there, they have Mike Pyle, John Wood, John Gunderson, Frank Mir just joined on. And the uh, jiu-jitsu coaches, of course, were a huge attraction. Shane and uh, Jerry Shapiro, uh, they are leading the program there, have basically started leading the program since I got there. So just meeting all those coaches and then meeting all the teammates, like, it wasn't a hard decision at all. No, for sure, especially with all the other, you know, talented athletes you have around you. Must have made it very easy for you. Oh, yeah. I mean, we have top ranked UFC girls. Um, Emily Whitmire is also in my division. So it's nice to have a UFC girl at my weight class so I can kind of like see where I'm at. And then we have like great jujitsu people. Yeah, I'm very lucky to be in that room with them. Now, tell me how this whole uh, matchup with combat sports coverage, a title fight with combat sports coverage came about for you. Well, uh everything's kind of just been rolling ever since I won high rollers back in February. I won their tournament. Um, and after that I got promoted and, uh, jujitsu tournaments started, uh, especially submission only shows like started opening up more, um, with restrictions opening up. And I apparently really liked doing jujitsu. So I just said yes to whatever they threw my way. And yeah, I got this opportunity and I'm super excited. It's for a bell. It's against another brown belt girl. So it's really cool to always test yourself in the division you're in. Uh, have you had a chance to look at Bree and kind of see what her, you know, game plan would kind of be towards you? Unfortunately, I haven't. <laughs> um, I probably should, but no, uh, I'll maybe look a little bit, but really I just love to train jujitsu. Like I'm never really training for anything specific or for anyone specific. I'm always just trying to be better and more well-rounded and, you know, if I get subbed with something in the gym, I'm working on it that day. So, yeah, I just kind of like to keep myself well-rounded and ready for anything that they come with. Yeah, no, it's super important, especially you said, you know, if you get subbed with anything, a lot of people don't focus on what makes them bad. They always, always try to focus on what makes them good. So that's important. 
Yeah, you definitely got to train the defenses of positions or being in a crappy spot just as much as you are being in a dominant spot. Uh, tell me a little bit, like, what's your game like? You know, what's your game plan going into this August 7th matchup? Um, well, being a smaller person that's, like, used to going against bigger people usually, um, I'm pretty, like, tight and technical, but also really quick. So I think my cardio is going to be really strong in this uh, matchup. And uh, I'm definitely a back taker. If you've watched any, like, any film on me, you can kind of tell. I like to take backs. It's not a secret. So if I can get there, awesome. But... If I can get a sub from anywhere else or into any other dominant position, I'll definitely take advantage of it. What's your go-to submission? You said you're a back taker. Do you like those rear naked chokes or do you go for elsewhere? Uh, yeah, a choke feels nice. You know, like it's weird to say, but like squeezing <laughs> someone till they tap is pretty cool. But uh, I've been working a lot of arm bars from the back take, kind of transition stuff. So, yeah. I uh, got an arm bar from guard against uh, Gina Vazani in my uh, high rollers match last week. And that was one of the arm bars I've been working a lot, shin to the back of the head, belly down. So I was pretty pumped on that one. Yeah, she's another high level, you know, not even just grappler, but MMA fighter as well. You see her in UFC. Tell me, what's it like for you to compete against people like that? It's definitely a confidence builder. Like if I do well against them to know that these like high level athletes I'm meeting up with or at least like being competitive with. Um, And it's again, just great to see high level competition, especially back where I was from. I was really the only girl um, in Northern California or at least like the highest level girl. So I was usually like teaching and helping. So having a high level belts or in high level grapplers, like pushing me in the gym every day just makes me better. I love it. Uh, tell me a little bit about your uh, jiu-jitsu heritage. I know you're at uh, Syndicate now, but t- kind of what was going on before then? Um, I was over in Northern California at a gym called Standalone MMA, um, and my coach was Brandon Rossetti. And he basically, like, kind of helped me through my belts, uh, got me all the way to purple while I was with him. And then uh, we also trained up. Uh, we traveled to Reading, which was about an hour and a half away, to Rice Bros., um uh they're called I think American Syndicate now but uh Tanner Rice he's a super high level black belt competes quite often uh they have like a star studded room in there uh he has another rooster weight girl who's a brown belt she just took gold and nationals so we got to train up there especially the last six months before we moved so we were super grateful for that they just stepped up our game even more and then we made the change out here to Syndicate and got with the Shapiro's now, uh, I know you said you came to, you know, Vegas right before the pandemic. What was it like for you guys to kind of try to just stay active during the pandemic? We luckily met a couple uh, a couple uh, fighter out here. So a husband and wife, um, Mark and Fanny Dickman, and uh, they had some training out of their garage. Sorry, my dog. Uh, They had some training out of their garage. And so we got to meet some people and train with them. And then uh, eventually Syndicate opened back up. Um, But yeah, we were lucky enough to get to train out of someone's garage, which is like why we came to Vegas to meet people like that who love to train and things like that. No, for sure. What kind of dog do you have? He's a pit bull. I feel like he wants us to acknowledge him real quick. A 70 pound baby. (laughs) What's up, buddy? Hi. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. How long have you had him for? He's three now. He's my first dog. I think he's the bee's knees. I love him too much. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, uh, obviously, you know, staying active during the whole pandemic was super important. Obviously, you said your fiance, does he train as well? Yeah, he is actually on the same card. He is a brown oh, bitch as well. Nice. And he's in the eight man tournament. Oh, nice, nice. So you guys are kind of just getting each other ready for this. Yeah, we train together all the time. We, especially like jujitsu, you can really do it with like anyone, any yes. size. And so us like both loving jujitsu. Yeah, especially during like the pandemic, we bought a bunch of like DVDs, you know, Gordon Ryan, Neil Mallinson. We would just watch them and rep it out in the living room. Cash would get in on it. Yeah, it's important, you know, just trying to pick from different places to where you'd be able to, you know, make everyone's game into your own and make your game as best as you can. 
Exactly. And then that goes into with like us doing MMA. We both do MMA. So like there's always a difference between MMA grappling and jujitsu grappling as well. So we kind of get a taste a little bit of both of those things. And like if, uh, for example, my last match was a against Gina, who's a uh, MMA fighter. Um, so I got to like use a little more jits uh, mm. and like kind of play it that way. Or if I'm going someone against a little more jitsy, I might go more MMA route and maybe be just a little more aggressive. Uh, do you have your next fight lined up already? Um, we're looking at the end of July, so at the end of this month, hopefully. Is it going to be with Invicta again? Um, not just yet. I believe it's in New Orleans with Bayou Fighting Championships. Uh, that should get be fun. New Orleans looks like a good place. Yeah, I fought in Mississippi, and so we spent a, like a half a day in New Orleans, and we got to walk down Bourbon Street and stuff, so that was pretty cool. Did you guys hit up Cafe Dumont? No, anywhere that had a long line, we avoided. We were just there for <laughs> an hour. But they yeah. had a lot of haunted signs everywhere, which was cool. That should be awesome. Yeah, no, are you going to be able to be able to spend some time there next time at least? Yeah, I think we are. We're going to, we'll see. We'll make it happen. Right. But that's the fun of fighting is getting to travel places, see new, uh, it's like see other big cities. Yeah, kind of compare it to what you're used to in Vegas. Yeah, Vegas is still pretty awesome. It's winning. Yeah, so. there's not a whole lot that compares to Vegas. It's open 24 hours. You could pretty much do anything anytime. Yeah, it's crazy how much stuff there is here to do. And like, not only just like party scenes, but they do really well with like their parks, their hiking, like activities that aren't just partying, like museums and stuff. It's a really cool place to live. Yeah, Lake Mead's like only... 20 30 minutes from you probably so yeah there's a ton of scenery around there too a lot of people don't realize that it's not just the strip like there's red rock my wife loves going down there there's tons of places to go check out in nevada oh yes and like they're mountain bike biking and like we're close enough that you can like take a day trip to utah or arizona if that's your thing yeah love Almost it definitely yeah, how so have you Right. How have you came accustomed to this heat, though? <sighs> Staying inside a bit. Sometimes. You know, it's crazy. Uh, in Northern California, it's really humid. And so no matter where you are, you're feeling the heat. But here, it's dry heat. So I feel like as soon as you're in the shade, it's not that bad. Right. Yeah, yeah no. I think uh, down here in the Laughlin area, it was 130 last Saturday. And that was ridiculous. Yeah, no, thank you. That was I won't the hottest outside. I've ever dealt with in my entire life. Yeah, I want to go outside. <laughs> so you said you've done high rollers. We talked about you doing American Nationals. What other big tournaments and events have you done? Oh, uh, I think high rollers is probably the biggest. I did a um, submission grappling in uh, Northern California before I left like two years ago. Um, but yeah, recently I haven't done too much like higher jujitsu competitions till recently. Done a few Nagas, some other IBJJFs. I won a sword at Naga when I was 16, so that was pretty cool. Right. Now, obviously, IBJJF is more like a point style. Submission only is, you know, just going for the kill. Which style do you prefer? I like the intensity that the submission only brings because I feel feel like that even if you're in like a bad spot you're like it's fine I could come back get a sub uh I like overtime rules like those EBI overtime rules um uh, me being a back taker it works really well into my game and everything if it gets to that point um but when you look up at like an IBJJF match and you're up on someone like 12-0 and there's no chance of them coming back in points that's a really dominating feeling too so I don't know. If you're winning, I feel like anything's good. Right. Just as long as you bring home that W. Yeah. Now, uh, any any matches or super fights lined up in the future? Um, Nothing so far. Just uh, this one in August. But I would love to be back at High Rollers anytime. Definitely going to be signing up for any jujitsu tournaments that I can. Uh, Submission on the Shore is constantly having shows. I was going to compete for them. Um, but then I got a fight the same weekend and uh, win, won the fight, so that was good. 
Uh, but yeah, so I'll hopefully try and get on to one of their shows since they're not very far usually. No, for sure. Now, this is going to be the first actual title fight of the pay-per-view. For you, how is it to, you know, like kind of set that tone to make sure that these super fight title fights are awesome? Oof. I'm going in for that sub and that win, keeping the action going, you know. I'm not really someone who likes to, like, have slow, boring matches, but I, li- I like the rolling, scrambling matches, you know, out of breath after, like, five minutes because you've just been going. But, yeah, I mean, but I also, like, have to remind myself, you know, be smart in the match. It's not always just about, like, entertaining people. It's about doing your best jujitsu and stuff. No, for sure. At the end of the day, the people at home aren't going to give you the W. It's what you do inside that match. Exactly. So, you know, if I have to be, you know, I play guard a little bit and some people might be like, oh, guard's boring or she just didn't open up her guard or whatever. But if I'm attacking you and subbing you in guard, you can't really talk any mess about it. Well, I believe uh, Joe Rogan says it best. It's the other person's responsibility to get out of your guard. It's not your responsibility to open up the guard. Exactly. You know, we're all trained to do the same things. We all know it's like the positions we're going to be in. So if you're not getting out of it, maybe you should work it a little more. Right. So we've got to know what you're like inside the cage and on the mats a little bit. Tell me what you're like outside of that. Sleepy. I like to take naps a lot. (laughs) Uh, I honestly just love hanging with my dog and chilling if I'm not at the gym. I'm at the gym for most of my day, uh, so I'm pretty boring. Uh, Hikes. I'm a goofball, but yeah, I'm just a sleepy goofball who likes who says they're they're hungry all the time. I carry fruit (laughs) snacks in my training bag all the time. Are you the type of girl who can't figure out where to eat? No, I we have like five set places that we go to all the time. And so it's just really like, what did we eat last? What's next in rotation? <laughs> what are those five places? Uh, there's a poke spot and all you can eat sushi. Can't uh, go wrong with that. A, uh, it's called Skinny Fats. It's like a, oh, a man. I know, I, know, I, like, I know exactly what it like, is. Yeah, chicken sandwiches and sweet potato fries and pizza. It can't go wrong with pizza, man. Pizza's yeah. awesome. Oh, and What's I do your love favorite, that. though? If you had to only choose one, you haven't had all sp- five spots in a while, which one are you going to? Probably Skinny Fats. I love chicken tenders and chicken strips, so like a chicken sandwich, solid, sold. Spicy or non-spicy? Oh, non-spicy. Non-spicy. Okay, okay, okay. I like to sweat while I eat. <laughs> and some, some people enjoy that. Some people enjoy it. Um, for you, I mean, obviously getting this title fight opportunity is huge, but, uh, what's on the horizon afterwards? Oh, uh, I just want to keep competing. You know, I was pretty out of competition, um, because of the move and COVID. And so I just want to fight as many times as I can. I just want to do jujitsu as much as I can. Um, yeah, I just want to get out there and test myself. Now having all these world-class women around you, is it safe to say that you have pretty much, you know, become a better version of yourself? Oh, yeah. Uh, I definitely think, like, I've had to step up my level to match with the girls in the room. Like, it's not easy. No day is a break. Uh, Yeah. And it's... I think we lost her. Are you there? <laughs> and we have lost Miss Valerie Wong. Let's try to pause this and get her back. For you, uh, what is it like to have all those top flight women around you at Syndicate and really help grow your BJJ skills and MMA skills? Man, those girls push me every day. No round is easy with them because a lot of times they're getting ready for competitions too. So they want those hard goes. So 
yeah, they're pushing me every day to make me better and then uplifting me afterwards, whether it's a good or bad round. And then my coaches, Mike Pyle and the Shapiros have definitely helped me like level up my jujitsu. So yeah, I think it's just helped me get better. And it's made me a lot happier as a person to have those like awesome girls by my side. For sure. And, and that's important too, you know, just enjoying what you do going through this grind. I feel like uh, more people need that type of environment. Oh, yeah. I'm not just going to train jiu-jitsu every day. I'm going to play jiu-jitsu with my friends and practice, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. Any last words for your opponent, Miss Bree Stick, before your 125-pound brown belt super fight? Let's make it a good match. Let's see who's going to get that sub and both go for it. Try and get that belt. And let's hopefully be friends afterwards. Most definitely. Uh, like I said earlier, that's the best part about jujitsu is just, you know, the friendship that you can have with somebody after you just try to kill them for six minutes. Uh, uh, that's the awesome part about this sport. You're not punching me in the face. I'm so down to be friends with you afterwards, you know, like show me <laughs> something that you did in the match that like I didn't understand. Like I love sharing things with people and it's cool to make friends through jujitsu. Definitely, definitely. Um, before I let you go, I want to give you an opportunity to give a shout out to your teammates, sponsors, anyone that's really helped you along your MMA and BJJ journey. Uh, huge thanks to Brandon Rossetti. We were talking about my star. So he's my one of our best jujitsu friends, uh, Tanner Rice and the Rice Bros for helping us in those six months um, before we moved to train out there. Mike Pyle, the Shapiros, everyone at Syndicate, all the coaches, all the girls, uh, and then my sponsors, Exhale Dispensary and Receptra for keeping my body and my mind healthy and happy. And anyone I've rolled with, yeah, that just pushes me every day. There you go. And thank you. A, no, no, of course, of course. I'm, I'm glad we were able to do this. Uh, side note, I will be doing the commentary for the pay-per-view so if people would like to order the pay-per-view, it'd be at combatsportscovers.com and there'll be a link in their description or somewhere around there so they can order the pay-per-view and watch Valerie perform against Bree Stick for the 125 pound super fight title and listen to me commentate it. It'll be a doozy. It'll be a good one. We promise. No, most definitely. Thank you again for your time. Uh, I know everything didn't work out exactly as planned, but it all worked out at the end. So I appreciate you uh, coming on and doing this with me. And I can't wait to uh, see you in Vegas in a couple weeks. Thanks so much. I'm excited to represent Syndicate out there. Hopefully it's it will be a good one. I know it's going to be a good one. No, most definitely. Like I said, this is going to be a star-studded lineup, and I can't wait to watch it.